Everything is a drum. Hey! What's up everyone? Adam from FWCI. I saw Blue Beetle last night at the movies and I'm going to watch the Blue Beetle pitch meeting from Ryan George because Ryan George is amazing. Uh, make sure you go to his channel. He's got the pitch meeting channel and his Ryan George channel. A lot of quality content on there. I'm sure you know this, but just wanted to take a moment to shout the man out because uh, he, he doesn't give me any copyright issues at any point, which means he's clearly okay with people covering his content in this format. And I appreciate that because he's hilarious and I love it. And you guys tune in as well, which is the important thing. So I'll kind of talk about the movie uh, as we sort of go through this and a bit more at the end. But my initial thoughts on it are that I enjoyed it more than I thought I would. I went in with very low expectations and my expectations were exceeded. So I'm not sure quite what that means. George Lopez was in it maybe a little bit too much, but his character kind of worked. I, don't, I can't believe I'm sitting here saying that I really liked a George Lopez character in a superhero movie. Susan Sarandon was great in this. Miggy from uh, Cobra Kai, pretty good in most of the t most of the parts, but uh, there were some gaping holes in uh, certain elements of this movie as well, which you know I'm sure we will get to in the pitch meeting. But let's jump into this one. This is Blue Beetle pitch meeting from Ryan George. So, you have a new movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. See, I was thinking what DC really needs is a movie about a young guy who gets chosen by a super powerful being to have superpowers, and there's a big focus on family. Shazam. Yeah, we just... <laughs> yeah, okay, that's, that's kind of... I, I kind of get that. But my missus was even saying on the way home, she's like, that movie was like one part Thor, one part... Iron Man, one part fucking uh, Shazam, one part like Spider-Man, like we, he looked like Yellow Jacket, like we, we actually noticed that there was a lot of, um, I think it's unavoidable at this point, but yeah, there was a lot of things that seemed to be plucked out of other movies, so maybe she was onto something did that twice. Well, this would be a different family, and they're Mexican. Oh, okay, that's probably different enough that it won't be affected by this whole superhero fatigue everybody's talking about. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure that superhero fatigue is a myth. You're telling me people could get tired of seeing energy beams? Well, like, what if there's... I don't know, what if there's more to movie making than wisecracking characters shooting energy beams? You sound crazy. That did sound crazy. I don't know what the heck I was talking about just there. So anyway, the main character, Jaime, is coming back from college and he needs a job fast. Why doesn't he just ask his father for a million dollars? Well, see, that's the thing. His parents don't have any money either. I don't get it. Well, sir, some people need to work for stuff. Oh, okay, this is like a fictional thing. No, actually, this is real life. Well, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, very rarely. I mean, I'm, I'm, there's that many superhero things now, I'm sure there is, but... Yeah, these guys were not well off in this movie. They're living in poverty. I've never heard that word, and let me tell you, I don't like it. Right, you might want to leave your rich person bubble from time to time. You mean like to Ibiza? Never mind. So this guy gets a job cleaning this rich lady, Victoria Cord's house. But this lady is the bad guy of the movie. She's super evil. Oh, she is, huh? What's her deal? Oh, let me tell you something about how evil this lady is. She's so evil... She's so that generic. That works great, and so she wants to use yep. this new <laughs> Just technology to build an army of super soldiers. I feel like I've seen this before. Oh yeah, absolutely have, sir. And that's a feeling you're gonna get in most scenes in this film. Oh, well that's kind of comforting. It is, isn't it? <laughs> nice and cozy. <laughs> so Victoria's niece, Jenny, finds out about the evil plan and decides to try and stop it. What does she do? She freaking sneaks into this secret lab in the cord building by stealing a scientist's key card, and she takes the blue beetle and puts it inside a big belly burger fast food box. What the <laughs> was that you on the box? What are you talking about? The big belly burger box. Was that you on the packaging? What are you doing on the pack? What is going on there? Yeah. Anything. Are you saying that when I said big belly burger, the image that popped into your head for the logo was me? Oh, yeah. I guess that must be what happened. What the hell, man? I'm sorry. I feel like you'd be a good logo for the big belly burger. We're like the exact same weight. Nah, nah, nah. You've got 20 pounds on me at least. Why? <laughs> 
That's pretty hurtful. Anyway, so what else happens? Well, okay, so then scientist guy goes back into his lab and he's like, oh no, the blue beetle is gone. Let's lock down the building. How'd he get back inside the lab if she had his key card? Hey, shut up. And so Jenny gives this fast food box to Jaime, who was in the building because she said she could get him a job. How's it a scarab's gonna turn him into blue beetle? It is. It's gonna go in his butt. Oh, super butt bugs are tight. <laughs> and choose him as a host and make him into a superhero. So why did this thing choose him as a host? Because. Great. So what can he do now? Well, he can fly and he's bulletproof and most importantly, the suit can create anything he can imagine. Oh, what kind of crazy stuff is he gonna imagine? Literally just blades and various energy blasters. Oh. Yeah, okay. So anyway, now to try to get- <laughs> That's a good point. Which is like, I can dream up any weapon you imagine. I was like, yeah, okay, let's do this. And yeah, it never really went anywhere interesting. Old mate's uh, power glove with the uh, with the big fist. That was more interesting. This blue beetle thing out of him, they need this smartwatch that's inside the cord building. So they got to break in. Well, that's going to be hard to do. I mean, they must be on super high alert. Actually, it's going to be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, it turns out his uncle Rudy had already built the exact kind of machine they need to break past security so they just use you know what this whole um pitch meeting could have just been called super easy belly and inconvenience because everything in this movie was very convenient like for example but then victoria's henchman carapax gets into a fight with blue beetle and he's got a freaking super suit as well uh -oh. and the blue beetle super suit wants to kill this guy but jaime's like no we're not killers oh very good noble moral code or whatever yeah but then later the bad guys attack the whole family and his father's gonna die so that's why he can't give his son a million dollars what now i'm getting it no you're not this is just a very <laughs> sad moment and then jaime's gonna get kidnapped because victoria wants to steal the blue beetle technology Oh no. And so the rest of the family's gonna have to band together to go rescue him. How are they gonna do that? Well, turns out Jenny's father used to be Blue Beetle, so they used some of his old tech oh. to murder a bunch of henchmen. Oh my god. Yeah, it's a freaking slaughter, sir. They shoot people and impale them and stomp them. She's the best. Oh, thing. Oh, that doesn't apply to them. They seem to have a wonderful time taking lives. Well, good for them, I guess. Good to have. Yeah, old mate was in that big bug spaceship and just <laughs> murdered some guy, just impaled him with the with the leg. The family killed a lot, and yeah, it doesn't make any sense. A good time. And so Carapax is gonna end up also getting Blue Beetle power, so then there's gonna be a big final fight. Uh-oh. Yeah, so we're gonna do this really neat thing where the good guy's fighting the bad guy, and the bad guy has similar powers, but he's a different color, and so this is like a CGI fight that happens. Oh, oh I feel so freaking cozy right now. Me. Yeah, I've been re-watching the, uh, not re-watching, but react- I've been reacting to the MCU pitch meetings and we've had that exact thing many, many, many times already. I'm only up to uh, the Avengers. <laughs> Do, sir. And so then Carapax is going to realize that Victoria is not a nice lady, so he's going to drag her into some fire to be burned alive. Oh, my God. And so then everybody's happy and Jenny becomes the head of the cord company and now they're only going to do nice stuff. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. So what do you think? Oh, I mean, it's a superhero movie with an ever so slight twist. How can anyone resist? Okay, great. So you're really not worried about superhero fatigue then? You know what? Superhero fatigue, schmooper fero fatigue. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's almost DC's worst opening book weekend in a decade. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I think it's, and it's not so much that it's superhero fatigue. You can still make good movies. They just proved that with Guardians very recently. But... This universe doesn't mean anything anymore. And the, the the after credit scene, the teaser, that doesn't mean anything anymore. Unless James Gunn is keeping it around. And I think he is keeping some things around. I don't think this is one of them. Parapax was a weird villain. He was unbelievably generic the entire movie. And then at the end, he gets like two of the best lines in the entire movie. And, and his backstory is just heartbreaking, but... It all happens in the course of like one minute of screen time, which is absolutely crazy. But he was a surprisingly deep villain by the time you get to the end of the movie kind of thing. The um, heartbreak in this movie, they did really well. Whoever directed this movie does heartache and heartbreak very, very well. The scene where the old man dies and everybody's and their house explodes and it's just raining shit on this family throughout that entire scene. It was just like, oh my God, this is so much adversity and that was a big part of the family's story you know that they they overcome and things like that blue beetle was okay miggy was okay the the cobra kai quality acting popped up a couple of times but for the most part when he wasn't like a 
overacting like a, a really emotional moment and he was a bit more like calm and chilled he was perfectly fine and i enjoyed his work in this and Su susan sarandon even if she is a little bit racist in this still a complete smoke show <laughs> let me know in the comments what you thought about blue beetle and uh the future of the dc universe we're gonna have to wait and see we've got aquaman and then after that who knows what the fuck's gonna happen don't forget to subscribe here on youtube and as always everyone be well stay safe look after your friends see you in the next video peace